You're listening to Let's Talk Sustainable Business. Hello, my name is Uwe Schult and it's a pleasure to welcome you to this episode in our series Let's Talk Sustainable Business. This is brought to you by the Conference Board Global Sustainability Center. Today, I will be continuing the conversation with Daniel Schmidt, the Chief Sustainability Officer at SAP. First, let me briefly introduce Daniel Schmidt. He started his career in 92 as a consultant at Kiefer and Weitinger, a customer relationship management systems company that was acquired by SAP in 97. From 2004, Daniel held various senior management positions within SAP Consulting across Europe, the Middle East and Africa. In June 2014, he assumed the role as Chief Sustainability Officer, and he is now globally responsible for sustainability at SAP. He holds a degree in industrial engineering from the University of Kaiserslautern in Germany. Welcome back, Daniel. It's a pleasure to be here again with you, Uwe. And uh, yeah, last time we talked about sustainability being a business imperative and how to bring purpose to life. So I look forward to today's conversation with you, Uwe. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the last time um, when when you talked about uh, with a lot of um, uh, enthusiasm about your, your job and your role and that you engage with so many different stakeholders and one stakeholder group I'm especially interested in, that's the customers. Because as we discussed last time, to bring your purpose um, to life, you have to work through your customers. And um, that is something that um, uh, is quite a challenge, I would say. Can you share a little bit how you go about that? I'm happy to do so. And it was a journey or is still a journey internally as well. Sometimes I, I talk to people and they tell me, oh, we need to do this in in our canteen or we need to do that in our company car fleet or we need to do this or that. And then I say, yes, you, you are right. But the biggest impact we have and we can create is through our technology, through our core business, enabling our customers on their journey, on their transformation journey, uh, transformation uh, journey and with digital transformation and bringing in then our SAP portfolio, that portfolio, that makes a huge difference. Uh, for them, but for um, in order to do so, you need to understand where your customer is, yeah, and that um, um, you need to understand that um, that sustainability has clearly become a core business topic, yeah. And for us, we we agreed on on core sustainability priorities like climate action or, or circular economy or having an inclusive and skilled workforce really to ensure our investments towards enabling our customers to run their business holistically. Yeah? And that is um, coming from, um, from that our systems were used to, to be as efficient as possible. And you, I'm honest, Uwe, efficiency alone will not bring us there. In order to solve today's societal and, and, and environmental challenges, we need to bring in innovation. Yeah? So we need to bring in and embed sustainability criteria in our data models, in our solutions, in order that our customers have the full transparency across the entire value chain, and then connecting these sustainability criteria with financial indicators. And that leads to innovation, that leads to new business model, that leads to business transformation, which is urgently needed. So again, efficiency alone will not solve today's challenges, innovation and digital transformation is needed to do so. I, I understand that, but uh, le let's focus a little bit on the um, on that challenge of the customer. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, he provides your business and uh, he might not share your vision uh, on sustainability. And then the question is, how do you manage to engage with the customer um, to create that common uh, goal. Yeah, and here, Uwe, I would not fully agree with your perspective because I would say, at least in the past two years, I have seen an accelerated movement. And let's call it thanks, Greta. Yeah, thanks, Greta. CEOs have understood that they have a huge risk not to find anymore any customers or consumers purchasing their goods and services and not finding anymore any talents in the future 
who would love to work for their company if they do not embed sustainability in their core business strategy. And that is what I do in order to prepare and being best informed uh, before I engage with the customer. I, I look at their purpose and then I check about their ambition level uh, of their targets. But even more importantly, I look what have they already achieved on their journey. And is mm. sustainability really embedded in their business strategy? But only by engaging with these customers and showing the connection between the so-called non-financials, maybe we should call them pre-financials, because they have a huge impact on your mm. financial performance. It has a huge impact on the value of your company. And if you are mid and long term successful in the market or not. And, and, and showing that connection, that helps um, customers as well to understand that that they have to change, yeah, that they have to change and embed SystemD in their core business strategy. And, and that is, uh, and don't get me wrong, there are great role models out there in different sectors where I learn a lot from them. So, uh, but you address a little bit the ones uh, lacking mm -hmm. or, and, and I would say, um, well, there are different majority levels I observe. There are these companies looking at that purely from a risk perspective. Then there are the ones looking at it from an efficiency perspective. Then there, there are the ones looking more from an opportunity, opportunity perspective and, and not just bottom line, but top line perspective. And the most advanced are the one looking at that as an innovation strategy. Yeah. Um, and I, I would like to get a grip on how you guys are actually doing that. Uh, can we work through a practical example? So uh, there's a customer, you guys want to engage with them. Um, is the sales force on, on, uh, on, on your site? Are they approaching you? How does it work? Um, they definitely approach me. Um, I'm, uh, um, every day I receive emails from the field, from our account executives and managing partners dealing with uh, customer relations, reaching out to me uh, because there are various aspects. Number one is definitely sustainability has become a core business topic and it's high on the strategic agenda of our customers across the various industries and sectors. That's number one. Um, number two is that due to that network I have and in, in a trustful way with my peers at other companies, I can open up a, a channel and we are well connected from our heritage where we are coming from to the colleagues in the IT department of our customers uh, with the CIO and, and the folks there. But having then access through me to business decision makers in the lines of businesses, uh, that is as well another element I can bring in as an additional benefit, which is highly appreciated by our colleagues in, in sales functions. And, and uh, you know, sorry for being sort of pedantic, but uh, how, how does it work? Because, uh, you know, are you then sitting together in a team uh, discussing the customer and how to approach it or how does it work? It it works typically in a, in a way, oh, Daniel, could you join the customer meeting? And then I have a preparation meeting for them and explaining a little bit what works and what doesn't work. And what works very well is to start with the customer and listen to their approach, listen to their targets, listen to their challenges they have on their journey to embed system in their, in their business strategy and in their business. And it's challenging, right? it's challenging. And, and there's different material topics depending on the business model and the industry that the customers are located in. Uh, and then to reflect on that by sharing our journey. And it's not a, for us, it's not a topic, a hype topic where we just jumped it on. We started with that already 12 years ago with a clear focus on sustainability. And I'm super proud that now in our renewed business strategy, sustainability is even more prominently embedded in our derived product strategy where our board member Thomas sauer who is responsible for product engineering for our product portfolio is so committed and saying, hey, sustainability management is well anchored in our evolved vision of an intelligent enterprise. So it's part of our portfolio and, and, and using that um, and sharing our learnings from our journey 
helps a lot in these customer conversations. Yeah. But first listen to the customer where they are coming from, then sharing our approach, our learnings and our understanding, and then uh, mirror that and saying, okay, uh, where can, could we focus on is uh, the topic of carbon, carbon, carbon is definitely a topic for each and every company, mm. uh, followed by circular economy, followed by reporting needs and holistic steering tools. So uh, it covers transactional topics, it covers analytical topics, but it important is to gain the trust of the customer. And you can only gain the trust if you can share with them what you have achieved internally as well in your own business operations and sharing learnings from your own, what we call in our case, the exemplar strategy and, and using these learnings then in our product strategy. So as one concrete example, Uwe, when I share the sustainability dashboard we have in our hands, which is accessible for 100,000 colleagues around the globe at SAP, where they see their numbers, not just the one uh, our CEO Christian Klein and our CFO Luka Mucic are sharing um, on earn, earnings day quarter by quarter. They share not just financial performance, but as well indicators like women in management, retention, carbon emissions. And on the same day, the colleagues have the data in their hands, their own data, because they could say, oh, I'm one of 100,000. I can't influence. So they see the carbon emissions of the team they belong to. And what are the, the causes, what are the emission um, sources uh, leading to these? They have the full transparency. They can compare it with the neighbor department. They can filter using our, our SAP analytic cloud solution, the geographical and the organizational dimension, having the full transparency across. And when I share that with customers, they say, wow, uh, Daniel, I need it. And then I'm responding, one is the analytical tool on the dashboard. Yeah. Um, the other one is how to get the data in. Yeah. And then we are in a in a business conversation about uh, the core business processes, the systems they already have. Like many in the in the chemical or discrete manufacturing industry, they already run systems um, like SAP's environment health and safety solution, where we have thousands of customers, where they use these systems in order to proactively identify analyze and mitigate environment health and safety risks so uh, um, they can manage their chemicals safely or monitor industrial hygiene or reduce their environmental impact so many customers already use solutions from our side from our portfolio for many years in order to do the right things but now we have the next level achieved yeah having that full understanding that sustainability management is anchored in our portfolio and that we embed data and we start with greenhouse gas emissions but we, we think broadly here think about water or social indicators energy consumption and others in order to create that full transparency that allows our customers to steer their business holistically now that is the way how we conduct these conversations and again over with each and every conversation i learn a lot from our customers as well where I think, oh, that's a cool best practice. We could uh, apply it so, um, at our, in our own operations. But when, uh, take that a step further, uh, Daniel, when, um, so I, I'm sure that certain customers, because industry sectors are very different and the material issues in different industry sectors, as we, we know, are very different. Um, I, I could uh, imagine that they will raise issues which, you currently haven't got the capabilities to address. Have you got a way of influencing uh, from that flow uh, the uh, development portfolio of your new products? Yes, I'm, I'm a member of the steering committee of our sustainability management program. Gunter Roth-Ermel is doing a fantastic job as a senior leader in product engineering, being responsible for that portfolio. But he uses me a lot as a sparring partner and influencing that journey and telling them about my market observations, my experience being uh, derived from our, my conversations with customers and having that broad uh, experience now over more than 10 years. Um, so I'm, and, and from an overall governance model, anyhow, I'm uh, the host together with uh, my boss, Luka Mucic. I report to the CFO. 
um, inviting the senior executives to our sustainability council where we address those uh, strategic topics where we address uh, the systematic uh, approach uh, where we address it from a portfolio perspective but as well from a go-to-market perspective and come there to the right decisions and, and, and the right investments in order to, to further accelerate on our journey uh, when it comes to sustainability. So if I, if I would ask um, um, your sales guys, um, uh, would they say um, it's, it's nice to have you on board or would they say it's essential to have Daniel and his team on board to engage with customers? Uh, I mean, it's a bit of a <laughs> naughty question to ask, but uh, I'm, no, I, a, I know you, you will a, be honest. It's a fair point here. And, um, and I observe a change over the past years. I would say from a nice to, uh, to, uh, to, to the wow effect. Yeah. And, um, as you might know, and our audience might know that, um, the fourth quarter of the year is always the most important one. And I received, uh, several emails from sales colleagues and told me, Daniel, thanks again for your support. Uh, made the deal thanks to you and your engagement and thanks to uh, the trustful conversation you were able to to, uh, to conduct with the customer so it is definitely there is a change and today i had a, a call up with a colleague who has a key role now in in a region yeah uh, carlos diaz he is responsible on a region level like as a chief sustainability officer in the region emea south or so europe middle east africa the south southern part and, and knowing that we we need to to really better understand the challenges for our customers, what is material to them, we need to as well enable the colleagues in the field because, to be honest, they are not the deep deep experts and they can't be the deep experts in that on that for many companies new topic. So we need to to understand how we can best scale and enable them to drive the conversations with the customers in the in the direction where it's beneficial uh, for both. But again, I would like to stress the topic as well. We learn a lot from our customers as a fundamental basis with regard to how we develop our solutions. Co-innovation is key. And it was never so easy. That is what I learned from my colleagues in product engineering. It was never so easy to find customers working with us in the field of climate action, in the field of circular economy, in the field of holistic steering reporting. Yeah? They want to be part of that journey. And we need to understand their, their needs, their demand, what data is needed, what, how to ensure data consistency across the entire value chain. And, and, and so it is a major part of our methodology internally, how we develop software doing that in a co-innovation uh, way with our customers. But selecting the right customers is another challenge for us then because they all say us, of course, we, we are the standard and so on. So you need to select the thought leaders. You need to select the, the ones from each industry where you believe they are doing the right things, which could help the entire industry to, to transform. And working with them and innovate with, together with them is really key for us. So what what I'm he hearing you say, and it, it 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 is quite convincing. You know, we, we haven't talked about uh, reducing um, the carbon footprint of the uh, the employees of SAP. We have talked about helping um, major contributors to greenhouse gas, uh, getting transparency on their data to be able to improve that. Uh, um, that is very encouraging because at the same time, what I hear you say is that actually enables SAP to do more business. Uh, so, you know, we, we started the conversation that in the beginning people said you either are very successful in sustainability or you're very successful in business, but both things don't go together. It, it, it seems to be you've just uh, explained a little bit um, that things have turned. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and yeah, it addresses these various facets of the overall business case. One is, of course, if we reduce our energy consumption in our data centers by being as efficient as possible, 
we save money. Yes, of course, it has a huge impact in uh, with regard to our own journey in the past three years in cumulative way. We were able to avoid costs in the range of almost 300 million euro in our own operations due to our focus on carbon emissions, just to share that number with you. But the other one is, and that leads to where I was coming from, this category of risk perspective, opportunity perspective, efficiency perspective, or strategic innovation perspective. And that is why I'm so proud of our renewed business strategy, where you see it is now an innovation topic. It is a, it is a strategic topic for SAP, um, where we helped our customers in the past to manage their top line, to manage their bottom line. And now the favorite terminology of our board members is to manage their green line. Yeah, knowing that sustainability is more than just green. But let's start with that, yeah, with the greenhouse gas emissions and climate for climate action that is urgently needed. So managing the green line here. Or you heard uh, during last year's Sapphire or customer conference, our CEO Christian Klein talked about resiliency, profitability, and sustainability. And these three terms they are connected. Yeah. Hmm. So it is really a strategic approach. It's a business case. It's a business approach. And of course, I'm uh, happy and I'm proud that we see that as well as a top line opportunity for ourselves. But over, our customers expect that from SAP as well to help them um, um, to, to um, deal with the current challenges and turn these challenges in opportunities. Well, um, I, I don't know whether you you are able to share that, but uh, it would be very interesting when you look at the, the your recent uh, customer conversations you had. Uh, could you share what uh, are the major um, requirements that uh, people are coming up with recently, um, um, challenging you? Yeah, and, definitely. And SAP. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the, um, they are looking for data consistency, number one. Um, they are looking for connecting data and helping them to... Um, to really have that holistic view. And that is quite critical. And there mm -hmm. it's important to apply as well, standardized methodologies, which are not yet in place for all the sustainability fields we are talking about. That is the reason why as an example, we will be joined as a founding member, the Value Balancing Alliance to do exactly that, yeah, to cooperate with other companies front runners in that field, thought leaders in that field of impact valuation and to, to standardize the methodology in a way that it can be implemented in a very pragmatic way. We are currently piloting uh, that. Um, um, we started with the piloting phase mid of last year. The first uh, uh, results are there, which uh, are very, very interesting. And then uh, we further reshape that uh, methodology. And the basic idea is about, and I'm fully convinced that this is the future um, to have that valuation of impact. So really looking at, oh, what is the business impact of your core business activities on the environment? And what is the impact on society? And then putting a euro or dollar behind that. So the valuation of it is very important. And that is where our customers are really looking at and challenging us then to help them or look at a very pragmatic topic about uh, the dynamics coming from the EU Green Deal, the sustainable finance topic, the EU taxonomy topic, where uh, companies need to create the transparency from this year on 2021 uh, about their so-called sustainable investments and sustainable revenue streams, OPEX, CAPEX and revenues and showing that and then yeah. being using that these data are used by the investors where the investors are asked by the EU legislation to show the transparency about their investment portfolio. What investments are sustainable, which one not based on the taxonomy. And that is a huge, huge challenge um, for our customers and for ourselves to deal with that. But don't get me wrong, it's the right direction because the ambition of the EU is to guide um, the capital markets and the investments towards sustainable development, which is needed. 
you you've raised that uh, uh, word value balancing alliance and of course that that in itself is is, is a huge uh, uh, topic um let me just point out that the the conference board has published two reports also in collaboration with you guys of course on that approach of total impact valuation that that you were referring to so uh monetizing uh, all impacts uh of of a company and summarizing them and balancing them out and and seeing what your overall impact is and uh impact means that um you know uh it's things like uh, the amount of uh, uh um training you do the amount of um uh, uh water you consume and and all these elements and monetizing them and if people are interested uh, in that uh, the, those those reports are available on the conference board um website and it's very interesting uh, what I'm listening to, what you're saying is that you have actually now made strides in harmonizing the approach because there are lots of different approaches there. Uh, and that, that is, of course, uh, what's needed to make that a more generally applicable tool. Isn't that right? Yeah, absolutely. And that is uh, expected from stakeholders that they can compare data. And only if you are able to come up with a standard that would allow stakeholders to compare um, the performance but as well one aspect is the reporting aspect but the, the the most interesting part of it from my perspective is the steering aspect internally for companies to have mm -hmm. them really the full transparency about the entire value chain and the effects and how they can bring in this kind of holistic thinking over um, coming from that history of financial optimization and financial decision processes to, oh, yeah, let's keep that. What we add to it, what's the impact on the environment, on our planet, and what's the impact on society, on us, on human beings. And that leads to better business decisions and better business outcomes. Um, so that is crucial. But again, uh, coming back to, to the topic um, where you challenged me about how we deal with customers. And... Um, and, and you mentioned the purpose of SAP about helping the world run better and improving people's lives. And you see more mm. and more purpose-driven companies out there as well. So for us, uh, we will pilot now uh, a methodology in sales where we think about um, how we can better address that topic and drive conversations in a well-educated way with our customers about purpose and through collaboration achieving these purposes because only with that that is needed in order to achieve these high ambitions and there we um, we focus currently on strategic accounts we start with the piloting that i'm looking forward uh, in, in the next days i will my have my first uh, customer conversations applying that methodology where it's about um um yeah um looking at these four pillars about reaching from an alignment, yeah, with common understanding of the mm. purpose of the company to mobilization, to design and to deliver. And, um, and the concrete outcome of such a conversation is then to, to, have, um, to have an agreement of uh, let's do an, what we call a purpose impact lab yeah, to kickstart that collaboration wow. towards a joint roadmap. And, and that would include from both the, parties from the customer and from SAP, senior executives uh, up to C-level um, to, to have then these uh, deep dive work streams and conversations being established, you know, really helping our customers, but as well ourselves to, to have that um, purpose-based conversation and driving outcomes towards that ambition level where companies, as we told, uh, talked about it over um, um, coming, we have seen so many pledges and targets and commitments, but we need to turn these pledges into real action. And the Purpose Impact Lab is about real action, how to do it, how to have the baseline, how to, where is the target, how to manage that now, what uh, innovation is needed in, in the business model, what kind of business transformation, what kind of digital transformation is needed in order to support that business transformation. So I'm really looking forward to these conversations in the next days and pilot that and hopefully we can then uh, scale in the second half of the year and addressing even more than the 30 plus uh, conversations we are addressing in the first half year. 
that sounds very encouraging and uh, and very interesting. And I think that merits another conversation, maybe in a year's time, to see how how this is going. Um, I, I'm glad you mentioned two words that are very close uh, to my heart as well: outcome and impact. Um, it's not only about ambition. Ambitions are important, but we really have to manage for outcome and impact rather than uh, just compliance and risk avoidance. So thank you so much, Daniel, for uh, sharing uh, your work with customers. Uh, it is extremely interesting, and I think this is also applicable for companies beyond the IT sector, so much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you, Uwe. It was, again, a pleasure to conduct this conversation with you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, and for our audience, if you have enjoyed this episode, please remember to subscribe to our podcast series or explore the entire catalog of podcast programming from the conference board by visiting our website at tcb.org slash podcasts. You can also write to us at sustainability at tcb.org. And thank you for listening and please join us again and goodbye for today. That was Let's Talk Sustainable Business.